welcome to the latest edition of the A Team Bad Guys documentary. Uh, this week, as edition, we venture on to the final season, uh, season five of the A Team, and we're delighted to be joined by the one one of the arch nemesis uh, of that season, season five, episode five. He played the dictator of San Marcos. The, um, a, a revolutionary uh, country as such island in uh, South America. Fictional, of course. Uh, he played the one and only um, Alexander Martin. And his name we have for you this evening is Castelo Guerrera. And uh, Castelo, um, I suppose the A-team, back in the 1980s, back in the 19, early 1990s, I suppose you were very much a promising actor. You were probably going from... Uh, jobs to jobs, well-established actor, project uh, from project. So when you got the chance or the opportunity when your agent came to you about a guest appearing on the A-Team, was it something you said, oh, that looks very exciting, uh, that's something I definitely want to do, or did you see it as another job at the time? Um, as a friend said, you, you always go with the job. I mean, the job is there, you go with the job. That's what we do. Uh, I have never, and I think that's true, I have never been in a position to say no to a job. Like, I won't do this, you know, this character or whatever. Uh, at that time, it was August of 1986, I was in New York. I still kept an apartment there in the East Village. And, uh, and I got a call from my, from my agent and, and he said uh, they would like to have you on the A-team um, on this particular episode. So uh, I flew back to LA and, um, and uh, it, it's, it's a classic when you parachute into an established show as a guest. It's, uh, it's like parachuting into a jungle full of guns and, and things, you know, and explosions. You don't know what you're going to, uh, find you don't know what to expect and the the adaptability as an actor and as a person has to kick in so I flew back to LA and went uh it's 34 years ago so uh we did scenes at different sets in the studios and then we did what I can remember the most is the shooting of the mm, external scenes at a place that was the New Hall Ranch, also known as the Film Ranch, or Indian Dunes. Okay. It, it was it was a bunch of uh, you know acres dedicated to um, to film, TV, commercials, what have you, and um, and it, repli it replicated. Uh, the jungle, the river, the dunes, the, the, you know, there was a little town, there was a, every production that came and did something, and they built, you know, something, it stayed as part of the, uh, part of the ranch. So it could be used again, or, or just uh, be put on display. And uh, that's a classic. So uh, I have a couple of anecdotes when we come to that about mm -hmm. the Indian dunes. And I suppose, Castello, uh, in terms of uh, the A team as well, you mentioned there about season five getting the opportunity to guest star. I suppose by then, uh, A team was known all across the States, all across Canada. It was its final sort of season as such after season two or season probably at the start of season three, it was probably one of the highest rating TV series in America in terms of NBC at the time as well. Uh, household, uh, it made stars of uh, uh, Dirk Benedict and uh, Dwight Schultz, even though Dirk Benedict was known for Battlestar Galactica, the, his role in the A-team even started parachuting him even more to the front light and Dwight Schultz as well. So when you got the call to be on the start of final season of the A-team and you, pro you probably were aware of its popularity, I mentioned at the time. Totally. You would not say no to the A-team. And uh, it had an aura. It had, uh, it meant action. It was highly popular and you had to be part of that. So 
to be asked to be in it was wonderful. And uh, I didn't have to audition for it. They had seen my, some of my work and, and they said, we would like to, to have you. Uh, however, the minute you get the script and in those days we used to get, you know, the real paper script, uh, not an attachment uh, along an email like today. Uh, first thing, you go to your role and, they, and it's a bad guy. So, so, okay, here we go. Mr. Bad Guy, uh, it, it had to be either uh, the island of San Marcos or St. Lucia or St. It, you know, it was always a saint where all this evil stuff was always happening. And in this case, it was St. Marcus and the character of Alexander Martien, who, who was a badass uh, through and through. But so, but these bad guys have the meat, uh, you know, of, of stories. They propel the stories. They justify the, the, the commando action by the, by the heroes. And so that's what it was. Uh, it, it, we had a lot of fun. There were some great names in the cast. And, and it's interesting how, as a Latino, you get to a set and you just, you pan around and you spot the Latinos. Uh, and if they don't come over, you go to them. Hellos, hugs, hey brother, como estas? And, uh, and uh, at that time we had Pepe Serna, who's a great uh, comrade in arms. Uh, Gino Silva, who passed uh, sometime recently. Eddie Veles. And uh, I think it was the last credited job that Alejandro Rey did. And he okay. too, like, like myself, he was from Argentina. Only Alejandro Rey had a, an aura, a name. And I was, uh, you know, pretty much in, in my first decade of work. Uh, yeah, and I suppose Castro playing a dictator uh, in terms of uh, South America as such, uh, did you start to look back on the history of say neighboring countries like Ecuador and Paraguay who were probably under dictatorship rules to try and find your inspiration in relation to Mr. Martin or did you look at the sort of Cuba aspect of the what, of what way you wanted to portray your character? Was it very much in the, in the spot when you saw the, the text, the script in front of you that you got the picture of what you tried to create? Well, uh, I think there was a reference to El Salvador and okay. uh, Ni Nicaragua. You know, those were the hot spots at that time. And, uh, and, and that was uh, in the news you could find uh, on a mm. daily basis. And that was pretty much it. Uh, funny, Cuba may have fallen back mm. to, uh, uh, you know, they were old by then. Um, though they never disappeared from the picture, but, but Nicaragua and El Salvador, I think, were prominent at that. And, uh, and, 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 you know, these stories, because it was a, it, it, it was a, a comic strip series, hmm. you know, it was a classic. Uh, there were imprecisions, there were some misnomers and so on and so forth but it was all about the, um, you know, just propelling the story of, uh, of the A-Team. And I suppose uh, in terms of uh, Stephen Cannell, uh, the producer, director of the A-Team, sadly, who's no longer uh, with us, uh, when, you, when you met Stephen for the first time in terms of set and uh, you were speaking to him in person, uh, did you really see he's uh, sort of a visionary in terms of what he was trying to do with the A-Team? Did you really see the, the imagination, that creative bubble within him? Uh, yes, uh, though, you know, it's, it's a busy schedule and it's a busy set. And sometimes you are on the other side, on the, on the, on the battle lines and you don't get to share, you know, time with the producers. And, uh, but uh, I think his vision was manifest in, in the fact that they cast me in other series, 
uh, and uh, in 1990, I went to uh, 21 Jump Street. Okay. But by then, uh, uh, Stephen Cannell had, uh, had, had already left California and gone to Vancouver, you know. Okay. And, and, and that's where he had his, his sets and all that. And, and 21 Jump Street was the new school of, the, of Stephen Cannell um, uh, productions. And I suppose, uh, Castello, uh, one thing that struck me as well, speaking to a number of people so far in terms of uh, this documentary, the odd say the hidden stars of the A-team was the stunt people, the stunt doubles, the stunt coordinators, that their stunt team was first class in terms of what the stunts they were able to do, that no one ever got a, a speck of dirt on them really in terms of, and no one was put into a position to do anything that they weren't f f left uh, comfortable with. And some of the stories that they went to so precision with the stunt doubles that some of the stunt doubles actually could have actually doubled for the actors that they look so like was the taking from what I'm hearing. Constantly. Uh, in a way, it was a stunt show with some actors. <laughs> you know, uh, I mean, at the, the army of, of stunt people and uh, uh, um, fight coordinators and... Uh, and, and the people making sure that everything went well, because, you know, we had the, the demise of that helicopter and, and, and Vic Morrow's, you know, of uh, Twilight Zone, uh, that, uh, that had happened, I believe in 85 at yeah. Indian Dunes. And so there was extra care. I mean, uh, the, it, there was extra care in making sure that the actors knew how to handle weapons, uh, when to handle them, how, you know, fire in the hall type of thing and so on and so forth. So, so uh, uh, the, the, the scaffolding surrounding the actors was huge. Uh, you know, the explosions, you have to clear constantly and make sure that nobody gets hurt. Uh, and still, and I have a little anecdote in that respect, uh, uh, things happen, you know. Yeah. Uh, uh, and uh, but uh, yeah, the army of stunt people. That's. I I would go as far as to say that it was it was a stunt talent show, mm. you know. Huge. Okay. And I suppose, Castello, uh, one thing as well, speaking to an awful lot of guest uh, stars that have appeared on the A-Team as well, we all probably know in terms of documentaries that would have come out later and people would have gone into details on the main stars between the sort of friction that there was between George Prepard and Mr. T. But speaking to any of the guest stars that arrived on the show, they all say it was a lovely cast, it was a lovely set, they had great time, they had no experience of any sort of friction whatsoever, that everyone... Everything ran smoothly. It was an enjoyable experience, and uh, they really lo loved their time in it. And if they were invited back, they would have gone back in a heartbeat. Is that sort of similar story for yourself? Was that what your experience was? Totally. Uh, it was a very, very friendly, very uh, welcoming set, uh, both by the actors and the crew. Um, and uh, you know, it's good to have you here, but the schedule is heavy. You got to move on. And and also, I told you about uh, eyeing the Latinos in the in the cast, and you immediately, you know, come to them, the hellos and all that, and so all of a sudden you have four or five Latinos talking, and you won't be able to stop them. <laughs> and uh, uh, and uh, and so. I, I would go as far as to say that the social life in Los Angeles, for me, mm. was mostly on the set. That's where I met Pepe Serna. Pepe Serna said, when you're ready to buy uh, your house, uh, call me, I'll give you my guy. And by God, that's what happened. I called him, he said, here's his name, call him, I'll call him too. And that's the house I have in LA. Uh, wow. and, and the same with, um, all the others, so we we ganged up, and uh, and so there was the A team, and there were the Latinos doing the subplot in the story. Uh, uh, there was the the Russian part too, but um, uh, and um, 
and, and so it, it, it was highly um, uh, it was the, the community coming together. That's what you made friends that you would you stayed friends if you liked each other and uh, and uh, and that's where the so-called career propelled in that you met these these wonderful people that you might run into on another set sometime later, you know. But he, you know, LA is so spread out that you really don't see each other that much because who's gonna drive the 35, 40 miles to see each other, you know? Yeah. Uh, and, and especially if there are drinks involved, who's gonna drive back? So that, that's the case. You met on the set and had fun on the set. And I suppose, uh, Castello, one thing that sort of struck me speaking to an awful lot of people, we know at that stage, um, uh, George Prepar was a Hollywood star, I suppose. Uh, after breakfast at Tiffany's, he was probably one of the top four or five uh, sort of male actors in, in terms of the United States. But aside from his problems uh, he had in his, his own personal life, one thing that sort of struck me was speaking to an awful lot of people, but anyone that sort of met him on set said he was very friendly, very polished, uh, thoroughly professional. Uh, he didn't miss a line, didn't miss a beat, uh, so in tune with his sort of character. and. Uh, so and uh, very sort of sincere in his uh, discussions with anyone that he came across, guest stars and all. Was that sort of uh, your experience uh, with George Papard as well? Totally, totally. Uh, uh, to the point, and that happened with uh, Billy Bob Thornton on another uh, set, on the set of the Alamo. He would he came over and said, "Are they are they treating you well, guys? You know, which is very nice." Uh, how are you guys doing? Welcome. It's great to have you. And that, of course, didn't happen all the time because then you're not in the same scene. You know that they're going to come at the end of the of the melee, you know. And so um, uh, but uh, on on the first day, it was very welcoming and very pleasant. And, and uh, I, I have a couple of anecdotes when you yeah. let, let me go, because uh, I don't remember much about the script, though yeah. I would say I would recognize it if I had it in my hands right now, or if I if I could watch the episode once again. But uh, but uh, two things that uh, that pop up: uh, we get there to Indian Dunes, and the girl on the wardrobe girl is running back and forth, and. And here, try this. And I, she's taken measurements, and and we've tried other things, but they changed their mind. So this new jacket is kind of tight, and and the pants are a little tight down here, and and so on. And it says, try this hat, and the hat is huge. It just plopped down to, you know, to my eyebrows. Yeah. And I said, this doesn't work. She said, oh, you know what? We are half an hour from shooting the scene. Would you mind? And so she filled with a ring of newspaper, uh, rolled up newspaper, you know, to see if it, how's that? I said, give it a little more. It was still loose. And so it was there, but I had to make sure that I didn't, didn't shake follow. too much because yeah. the thing would, would either plop or just fly away. <clears throat> so uh, uh, there is a scene where I'm giving a speech you know, furious speech, and uh, the helicopter is going to come and fly above, yeah. and, uh, which it did. And with the force of the wind from the propellers, my head just plopped out. <laughs> and it was very funny because I had to tilt my head back like that to be able to see the people. A general, you know, a mm -hmm. commander of that sort would never do this, you know? I mean, yeah. you don't touch that. It goes on. So it was a big laugh, but but it went along. Probably nobody noticed, but I did, and the people around, and we made big jokes about that. So they come, okay, they're bombing your house, your palace. You're going to have to run away. You're going to hop on the Jeep. Have you driven a Jeep before? And yes, I had. I said, yes. And I look at them you know, the knob, 
and uh, it's a manual, of course. And of course, one is pom pom, you know, up here. I said, yeah, yeah, fine. You're sure? You're good. Come on, guys. We gotta get the scene. We're losing the light. So, action. We run. We hop. Turn on the thing. I crank it to first, and I, <laughs> and it, it was, it was the, uh, and I start heading towards the cameras. You know, the cameras were exactly behind the jeep. The cameras were going to see the jeep of the traitor of the the cowardly. Uh, 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 commander, go away, you know. And say you're coming towards them. <laughs> I'm coming towards her, and the and the word was, get out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> of course, that was cleared. A big fright. Uh, are you okay? This, what happened? You know what? This is what happened. The knob. You know how you screw it yeah. on. The knob was not at the right place. Okay. So, uh, so that's my two anecdotes about Indian dunes. Other than that, we had a beautiful time. It was great, great. And it's it amazing how uh, all your time throughout your career, being in many TV series and episodes, memories like that, incidents, they do stay a lifetime uh, with you, sort of scenarios like that. You all of a sort of remember this sort of stay fresh in your mind. And that's sometimes in terms that, it shows really that you really enjoyed your time as well. Because sometimes if you don't like an experience, uh, you try and quickly try and forget about it. It's not always roses because there are some tough situations. There are some impossible actors and I may be one myself, but um, and there are difficult, you know, difficult uh, tight spots at times, but it's the making of film and TV. It's the making of it that has, first of all, it stays with you. It, you write anecdotes, not about the finished product, but how it was put together, mm -hmm. you know? So uh, it's, it's the, the, the stumbles and the mistakes and all that, uh, you know, and I have, a, I have a, a, a horde of anecdotes about uh, mishaps and things like that. And um, <clears throat> uh, with, with good fortune, they won't be tragic, you know, and they will stay at the light level of just uh, uh, funny or memorable anecdotes. But it's the making of film that is just wonderful. And I suppose, uh, Castello, uh, Castulo, uh, before I let you sort of go as such, I have a sort of uh, a challenge for you now. Uh, let's pretend there was an A team encyclopedia, a sort of a uh, encyclopedia of all the character actors that appeared in the A-team over the five seasons. And let's say they were trying to do this uh, encyclopedia for the 21st century. And uh, they came across your character, uh, Mr. Martin, uh, the dictator uh, of uh, San Marcos. And they said, we need two lines to summarize him to, for the encyclopedia, the dictionary. So they get your they get down to your agent, uh, they get your phone number, they ring you up, they tell you about the project they're doing. They said they're doing an A-team encyclopedia, they want to uh, put Mr. Martin in it, uh, they want uh, uh, Mr. Alexander Martin, they want two lines to summar up or summarize what type of a person he was. Uh, having you having portrayed him, they feel that you were the best judge. Uh, what would you like those two sentences to read? It's, to me, it's very simple. The palace. They're bombing the palace. <laughs> that's it. That was, that's what he cared for, his golden palace, you know. And he didn't want anybody. I mean, plus, once they, they got to the palace, that's it. It's, he's got to go, you know, which is the old story. It's the castle, the palace, the, your, your fort, you know. And uh, when Martin... Uh, loses the palace, it's time to get the hell out of there, <laughs> which he doesn't really. They catch him, they, you know. Uh. Uh, I suppose, Caslo, uh, in terms of uh, reliving your memories uh, this evening uh, from the A-Team Season 5, Episode 5, The Theory of Revolution, you played the uh, one and only Alexander Martin. An absolute pleasure talking to you today to relive your memories of your time playing that character back in the early 80s, uh, 
thanks for sharing your memories about interacting with the main cast and uh, your experience playing the, the main villain of that episode. It was a pleasure talking to you, Castelo Guerrera. And uh, we wish you a prosperous uh, 2021. And uh, no doubt, hopefully, by the time uh, you turn on your TV screens, uh, you get to see that episode again and you can start to relive it, those sorts of memories of your time on the show. No doubt family and loved ones have seen it throughout the years. It's been seen all over the world, even in places like Argentina, where you originally hailed from. And it's dubbed in so many different languages throughout the world, Spanish, German, Italian. So everyone gets to see you and your performance in the A-Team. And uh, thanks for being our guest today. Thanks to you and your audience. All my Cheers. heart goes out to you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Castlo. Be safe.